Welcome to the standard portion of the Strixhaven Championship. It is round four. I'm Ailey Loney alongside Cedric Phillips, and we are going to jump into the very first standard match of the tournament. And it looks to be a good one. Two Yorion decks, but two very different lists indeed, Cedric. Why play 60 cards when you can play 80 cards? Uh, Yorian has had a huge impact across all of Magic once it made its debut last year uh, via Aquaria. Even though we saw a change to the companion rule, this card is still powerful enough to have a huge impact across all of Magic. And that's exciting because it's a card that I really do like quite a bit, Ailey, and we are going to see quite a bit of it here in this matchup between two of Magic's very best active players right now. Yes, indeed. The Cleveland Mythic Champion up against the current world champion in Palo Vito Damodorosa, both looking to progress or proceed with the 4-0 victory here against each other. But uh, only one will maintain their perfect record after this. So let's get this game underway as we take a look at the opening hands here. All I ask is that you don't ask me to pick a winner because they both make content for the website I work <laughs> for. So, uh... <laughs> So you, you both win. Favorites. You both win. I will. Is... Uh, come on, Cedric. You have an easy out here. Uh, a Yorion deck's gonna win. I'll feel there you okay. go. Perfect. Great. Go Yorion. Yay. Go, go Yorion. Plausible deniability. You got it. I do think, all <laughs> things being serious and honest right now, I do think this matchup is a pretty tough one here for Burchette. I think that Autumn is gonna be able to clean up on all of the adventure decks that are running around here. And I think this is kind of a conscious decision, right? Because there's not a lot of counter magic running around, especially in game number one here for Burchette. Just those main deck copies of Saw coming. I suppose things could line up well for a Jirari disruption, but uh, actually, I don't. I just don't foresee that countering an emergent <laughs> ultimatum. So a lot of things would have to go right for disruption to be pretty good. So I think game one, Burchette is in some trouble. Uh, things do get a little bit better after sideboard, of course, and we'll get to that when we do get to that. But game one, I like Paulo quite a bit here in this particular matchup. Yeah, as the desk said, this is this is like the known quantity in standard, the big bad, as it were, you know, the most played deck in the previous weekends, that sort of thing. So quite a risk here for Burchette to bring this iteration of a Yorion deck. It's a fun, it's a fun list for sure. I love enchantment shenanigans. Constellation is one of my favorite keywords, but I'm wondering how good it's going to be against the Sultai deck. Well, I like the risk here in so far as, and we see that we have seen this, excuse me, in magic tournaments for you know, almost two decades now, which is this deck that Autumn is playing uh, with what the information that I'm working with and what I believe to be true is that it is not good in this particular matchup, but it is probably good against everything else. So with that in mind, if Salte Ultimatum either A, performs poorly or B, was underrepresented for the weekend because people were trying to go after it, then you might be in an exquisite position for the weekend. And we have seen this happen in an abundance of events at this high of level. So it doesn't mean that Autumn can't win the matchup because that's entirely possible too. I just think a bit of an underdog in the matchup, but an overdog, which isn't a word, in <laughs> a whole bunch of other matchups. Well, now you have to coin that phrase and get people to start going hashtag overdog. You see, well, there it is. this is how there you make is. words. Ty, that's how, is that how I get trending? Is that yeah, what it is? Uh, yes. Okay, go, great. Go chat, do it, do the thing. I will say though that Autumn is off to a very, very good start here. The Skyclave Apparition able to disrupt that ramp strategy from Palo, at least for the time being able to stave off a thing like abiding the old gods on turn three. So now it's going to be interesting to see what the follow-up is here. Are we just going to wait to see what is deployed on the battlefield? Are we going to be brave enough to run out the Archon of Sun's Grace or just hold up the Omen of the Sun? Tough to say, right? Because there's a high ceiling here of if you play Archon of Sun's Grace and Paulo doesn't have a way to get it off the battlefield, you get to untap with that and kind of set up a pretty nice turn. I can see that this is a kind of a high ceiling play of playing Archon, maybe crossing your fingers a little bit that there's, you know, not a not a binding the old gods because Extinction Event's not going to clear away everything in this instance. But Paulo does have an answer. It's just a question of which one he would like to play. So we go to Binding the Old Gods. That's going to take care of the Archon of Sun's Grace, which can run away with things. We've seen... Palo play a pretty similar list in the World Championship. That's what one of his title, that Archon of Sun's Grace with all those constellation triggers and a very similar style of deck in this uh, Yorion Sky Nomad list. So yeah. he is no stranger to that card. Yeah, you and I got to got to call that tournament in Hawaii in what feels like 800 years ago. Um, yeah. So I guess Paulo's the 800 year reigning champion it's of the world right now. It's been 84 years. <laughs> but Paulo <laughs> is very familiar with Yuri and he's very familiar with Arcana Sun's Grace, which means that he knows the importance of getting those off of the battlefield. So buying the old guys to take care of that problematic flyer. But again, this is the, the issue I was going to bring up here in game one, and I will kind of hammer home over the course of this matchup, is that Autumn, as far as a clock is concerned, it is very, um, 
It's very underwhelming is the word I'm going to use. You know, Skyclave Apparition taking care of a Wolf Willow Haven and then beating in for a couple points of damage is, is, is all well and good, but there just isn't a lot of power on the battlefield right now for Burchette. And there's um, there's just going to be the difficulty of being able to manage that and the the emergent ultimatum that is coming here, Ailey, Ooh. which is always the scariest thing about playing around this deck, though that was a nice find to be sure. A very nice find indeed. I was going to ask you, what, what's the consideration there just to Elspeth's Conquer's Death, the Binding? Is that even a consideration? Like, at what point do you stop attacking the ramp of this deck? Well, I think you have to think about it, especially because you know that Paulo has a copy of Urian in, in his hand. Now, you know, is the fifth land going to the battlefield untapped? We know the answer is yes. Autumn doesn't know that for sure. Uh, unfortunately, there for Paulo. Um, also, the fifth land is a blue source, a second blue source where you're going to be able to blink the Bind the Old Gods. I mean, you can definitely make an argument for just getting that Bind the Old Gods off the battlefield, but then my question to you would be is, how do you beat the 4-5? And you don't have a great answer for that either, so you're in a rock and a hard place, which is what makes this Saltai Ultimatum deck so darn good. Yeah, it certainly knows how to deliver the beats. You think, okay, I'm fine for one turn, and then nope! Emergence Ultimatum out of nowhere, and the game pretty much is a foregone conclusion once that resolves. Yeah, uh, we have seen it time and time again, be it the Call Time Championship or many other events in between that time and today. Once Emergent Ultimatum resolves from this Salty Ultimatum deck, uh, it's more often than not just kind of lights out. So now if you're Autumn, when you found the copy of Saw coming, you can use this counter spell here on this Shurian if you'd like to, but then you have to, of course, weigh, does my opponent have Emergent Ultimatum in hand? If they do, do they have the untapped land to be able to take care of it? How much do I care? Do I have to just hope that they don't have it and never draw it? Um, that's the difficulty of this matchup here for Autumn, with only having access to four really hard counters and saw it coming in game number one. Yeah, so unfortunately for Autumn, she can't be too carefree about the use of these counter spells. Really, has to pick her moment. And Yorian Sky Nomad will resolve, suspecting that there is a threat of an emergent ultimatum in Paolo's hand. And when you're playing at Salty Ultimatum, and I'm sure you know this just like most of our viewers do as well, there's always just this underlying feeling of, yeah, their deck is 80 cards, but they just always seem to have the ultimatum ready to go <laughs> early on in the game. And so you're always just kind of thinking about if they have emergent ultimatum, what happens if they cast it and it resolves? And the answer is that you lose. Yep. So you're going to keep that counter spell in your hand, but now... Autumn doesn't really have a meaningful way to attack. There's a 4-5 and a 2-2 two, two just blocking the road here for Paulo against a couple of knucklehead 1-1s, one, one. so there's really nowhere to go. The one thing that's been quite prevalent lately in both metagames, in Historic and Standard, is just how good flyers are. Yep. You know, Emergence Ultimatum can get the job done for you lickety-split, but so can Yorion. That's a flyer, and Autumn has no clear answer for it right now, because an Elspeth Conqueror's death would just be shields down for emergent ultimatum so she can't do that so this this sky noodle is going to get a good chunk of damage done yeah and, and again this is what was, was kind of the problem in the early stages of this game is exactly what you said which is urian just being a four or five that was added to paulo's hand via the companion mechanic and just being kind of problematic paulo feeling so good about things right now that he's actually you know what i don't even need to hold back i can just attack those one ones i don't care about with this two two that you've gifted me from skycliff apparition finally leaving the battlefield so life is good for the reigning world champion uh and I'm hard pressed to see a way for Autumn to get back into this particular game. As I mentioned at the top, Ailey, I think that game one is extremely difficult for Burchett. Yeah, it is looking like that at the moment. Let's see if there's anything off the top here from Omen of the Sun. There's a Sky Nomad of her own though, and several plenty good targets to bounce. So it is a very nice card to find here because you have two Omen of the Seas and an Omen of the Sun, right? So there's a lot to like about that. You're also taking a look at a sixth land. So the question that Autumn kind of has to ask themselves right now is, okay, do I want to take the sixth land, add Yuri into my hand? If I do that, I still have Saw it coming up because Autumn has kind of declared kind of early on right now that, hey, I'm going to play around Immersion Ultimatum. I had the opportunity to counter the Yuri. I mm -hmm. didn't do that. So right now, I'm looking at the saw coming, and we're just going to be leaving up mana to be able to cast that for a really long time. Maybe Autumn <laughs> takes the shields down off of that plan at some point, but I'd be surprised if that were to happen. And she's got some life to work with. Sitting at 20, that's five hits from Urian, so you're not underneath that much distress. If you can find a seventh mana to be able to play a five mana threat like Elspeth Conqueror's Death, and then also play saw it coming, you're doing pretty good in this game. So you've got some time here. Yep. Certainly time is on Autumn's side here, as Maze Mind Tome looks to be the play, which will allow her to gain a few more cards off the top of the library, a couple scries if she wants to go that route too, but importantly, as you mentioned, leaving up Sword coming, because we see that Emergent Ultimatum just looming in Paolo's hand. 
And apparently she sees it coming too, and it's gonna play the game around that card <laughs> accordingly. So Binding the Old Gods is gonna trigger again. So and, and this is where things get a little bit difficult, right? Because Kiora Best the Sea God is a good enough card to counter with the saw it coming. So had things kind of remained the same, you know, four or fives attacking in, Paulo draws a, a land or removal spell, whatever. Okay, fine. But this card is good enough that Autumn actually has to care and has to figure out how to use the saw it coming now. Yeah, there's a consideration here to counter it. There is the Elspeth Conquers Death in Hand that can take care of the saga. And then hopefully there's a another land off the top of the library here. Yeah, I like starting here with the Maze Mind Stone. Get as much information as you can before making a decision. Now, Cure, the, the Skyclave Apparition is not an answer to anything. It doesn't take care of the token. It doesn't take care of the saga. It doesn't take care of the Urian. <laughs> so not the best of draws um, for Burchette there. And now, again, you're just, you're straining on this saw coming the entire time. And we might see the decision of, all right, I guess I'm going to saw it coming this and really hope you don't have Immersion Ultimatum in your hand and never draw it. That's such a risk to take. I mean, from Paolo's side of the battlefield, you know, like we've been focusing very much on Autumn's side because <laughs> this is the deck to beat in the format. Paolo is the player to beat in most instances, but he's just doing an excellent job here of trying to bait out these counters that... You've got to know he knows Autumn has. Yeah, it's the perfect draw step. It's the perfect, perfect draw step there for Paulo. It, it's a card, again, that's good enough to counter with Saw Coming. You know that Autumn only has four copies of Saw Coming in the deck list. And so you have found a perfect card that is worth countering at this point. Now, if Autumn finds another copy of Saw Coming, great. And that would be the best draw right now for her. Unfortunately, it is just a planes off the top so not what Autumn wants to see. Let's see what we're going to do here. Going to go to the Maze Mind term. Draw another card off the top of the library. It's a Hengegate Pathway. So still not what Autumn wants to see. And you got to think, now Paolo's sensing that, uh, you know, you might just be free and clear, especially if this Elspeth Conquers Death comes down. Well, yeah, now, now Autumn... You know, so here's the question now, Ailey, which is, do you, do you want to bluff and act like you have a saw coming, or do you just want to say, you know what, I'm going to play my game and hope you don't have Emergent Ultimatum? The yeah. answer to that question is now very obvious, which is, I'm going to play my game, I'm going to hope you don't have Emergent Ultimatum in your hand, and uh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Yeah. Not looking good here for Autumn Burchette, not finding the interactive spells that are needed to stop this insanely powerful deck from popping off. Go for it, Paolo. Free and clear. Oh, we are super clear for takeoff. Yep. <laughs> so there's Emergence Ultimatum. He's got a bevy of options that he can go and select. What would you go and grab from his deck list? Oh, boy. The old a little bit of this, piles. a little bit of yeah, that. I mean, it's a little bit of this, a little <laughs> bit of that, which is not the answer I know you're looking for. So I'm going to try to give you a little bit of a better one here. I mean, there's no bad options, really. Uh, let's see. So we might want to dabble into the Vorinclax area. That's probably step one, because Kiora Best of Sea God's out of the deck. Uh, well, we, we generally start with all runs of Pipney. So it's probably a Pipney, Vorinclax, and... Um, come on, brain, work. Where are you? Uh, to Bolt. To yeah. yeah, Valky. Thank you. It's probably going to be those three. Oh, yeah. And there you go. Now, okay, let's have a look at this. What is the way that Autumn stays in this game? All of these cards suck. Let's just put it like that. They suck. I don't, I don't know, Paul. <laughs> the way for Autumn to win this game is Paulo's internet going out, I think. <laughs> I think that's the out. Oh, goodness me. Because if Valky ultimates, then he just gets every single card in the graveyard and he can go wee and start chucking a bunch of stuff on the board. Foreign Clex is a big old beater, a 6 6. Aaron's Epiphany just giving extra turns. <sighs> it's always, this is always a feels bad. There's no good option here. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Looks like Vorinclex is going to go back in, so we're going to see Epiphany mean an extra turn, and then a old uh, old Tabot, Tabalt, excuse me, Cosmic Imposter start to uh, get its footprint onto this game. <laughs> so an extra turn here for Paolo. He'll be quite happy to take that. Just has Extinction, Event, and Heartless Act in hand, but manages to <laughs> rip an Archon of Sun's Grace and a Quandrix Cultivator off the top of the libraries. Oh, that's so gross. Yeah, seen worse. Uh -huh. Extra turn coming as well. <laughs> and, and you know, at this point right now, it is, has Paulo won the game? 
specifically, you know, has 20 damage been dealt or, you know, some sort of combo gone off? No, but it's it's this overwhelming advantage that Paulo has now with Tabalt in the battlefield, with an Archon of Sun's Grace apparently joining the battlefield probably for him as well, removal spells in hand and Heartless Act and, ex and Extinction Event. It, it's just too much to overcome now at this point. Yeah, this is looking like a no-win situation, unfortunately, for Autumn. Going to put a stop on the upkeep to scry with one of the omens. Let's see what the follow-up here is from Paolo, though, before the turn is passed. I mean, it's so tempting, right? You just want to play the pony. Just, 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 just do So things. wait, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. This one's a pony, not a pigeon? Uh, yes, because it's, uh, it's a horse, right? <laughs> It's a okay. Pony. Well, well, technically, <laughs> technically, if I'm being, I believe it's a Pegasus. Okay, fine. I'm gonna have to check. I'm gonna have to call the flavor judge. But <laughs> I'm having difficulty keeping up with the flavor of magic and the flavor of Ailey. Okay, yeah. all right. Look, it looks like a horse. It just has wings, so it's a pony, right? But all the other birds, they look like birds, so they're, they're pigeons. So they're pigeons. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Okay. I'm, ta I'm taking notes. I'm glad we cleared that up. <clears throat> I'm, ta I'm taking notes. <laughs> Seagate Restoration is going to be the play here for Paolo, refilling that hand, taking a look at a bunch of good stuff. Shakes the head there, though. What do you think he was looking for? I'm not sure exactly what he was looking for. My my guess, because I don't believe he played a land that turn, was that he was looking for a land so he could play Seagate Restoration plus a four mana spell. And I don't think he can do that now, so I think that's what he was looking for. Okay. It's not going to slow him down too much, but maybe looking to get rid of Elspeth Conquers Death as the second chapter does slow him down a little bit. All right, well, he still has a ton of options and, you know, one, two, well, it doesn't matter how many cards he's in, but, you know, the full <laughs> the full grip and to bald on nine and yada, 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 as it were. So <laughs> it, it's extremely, extremely far ahead is PVDDR. Okay, all right. Can that, okay, that can at least stem the bleeding a little bit from the next ultimatum. So that's going to be the draw there for Autumn. Sword coming. Oh, let's see. What else do we do on this turn? Let's get Yori on to hand. Oh, Big not bird. leaving up the sword coming. Okay. Yeah, Wanting I to mean, use the Elspeth you're, you're, death. You're right. at the point right now where you're so far behind that you, it's it's not about the counter spell right now. Yeah. I mean, you can get a lot of value out of this. You get to blink your, your ECD, your three omens, your maze mind's tome. So you're going to get three omen triggers, which means you're going to get to look at you know, like four cards and Maze Mind Tome do some scrying and I, I waste away that to Bolt, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a pretty good big bird. Yeah. All right. Shields down once again. So Paolo will be free and clear if he's got the mana available for another Emergence Ultimatum. Taking a look at the top of the library, Archon of Sun's Grace is quite good if it survives. Not sure if it's going to stick, though. All right, so now I'm gonna get a little. I'm gonna get a little interested in this game now because it's like, okay, is Autumn able to actually work themselves back into this thing somehow? I mean, with a a, a, a sheer amount of dude power, perhaps. I mean, it's, pre it's so pretty tough. There's so much removal in Palo's hand, though. How do you work around those three? Yeah, there, there's so there's an extinction event that's gonna wipe away what like all the evens, which is mm -hmm. all the tokens except for urine, and then a heartless act can take care of that. Um, and then you can kind of just find a way to win at your leisure at that point, I think. Like, I, I, I think, actually, this is kind of a weird thing to say, but I think the Emergent Ultimatum in Paulo's hand is one of the least relevant cards right now. It doesn't mean yeah. it's bad. I just think it's one of the least relevant cards that's going on. All right, so a couple of scries there, a couple more omens found. We've got some Skyclave Apparitions to deal with permanence on the battlefield. Non-token permanence, importantly. What is Paolo going to do this turn? Oh, hey, look! I have your pony. Haha! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to... Okay, so we're going to start there, and then I guess binding away... Urian. Uh, I guess we can just take care of Elspeth Conqueror's death. Either one's a good target, and then also get yeah. a 2-2. Two -two. Alright, sure. Look at me. I am the pony deck now. So rude. I love it. <laughs> okay, so will we see another scry here from the Maze Mind Tome on the end step? Yeah, I mean, probably need a little help. Yeah. These Skyclave Apparitions are going to be quite useful just to stem the bleeding a little bit from the Archon of Sun's uh -huh. Grace. It's hanging out on that side of Yorion uh -huh. is very yeah. nice indeed. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> that's I don't know if that's the best draw, uh, but it's obviously a very, very good draw. Oh, yeah, that's super good. Because we can actually double blink here, if I'm not mistaken. We can get Yorion off the board. Oh, yeah, we can, do a lot, we, can do a, we can do a lot of nonsense right now. Yeah. Like, a lot of nonsense. And what's the most problematic card that we could get rid of first? I've got to say it's the Archon. No, we're going Arch to be getting rid of two things here, right? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say it's Archon or Binding, but it looks like we might be eyeing up a Maze Mind Tome. So we're going to start there. Mm -hmm. In okay. response, quick scribe before it goes bye-bye. Hmm. Allah will send away the clear water pathway. An unknown card on the top of the library. And Skyclave Apparition will bring that over to this side of the board. You know, more often than not, when Merge and Ultimatum resolves, the game generally ends pretty quickly. That has not been the case here. Mm -hmm. I do think that Paulo is still favored here, given the contents of his hand. But Autumn is making this game very interesting very quickly. Oh, we're going to see the double... the... the... The double blink. Yep. You'll love to see it. Okay, so end step, we're going to get a bunch of permanents back. Yoran's going to enter once more, and we'll be able to bounce things once again. And maybe we got a new maybe we got a new card here, Yorin Ultimatum. That's what we're seeing get cast every turn now. <laughs> oh, Nico Aris. Sure. Things Walker we don't see very often in the meta. That's going to go to hand here for Autumn Burchett. Doomscar. Oh, no, you don't want to blow things up. I don't know, maybe, well, maybe you, might, you, do. you might want to. You might want to clean it up. I mean, you've got... S <laughs> mm. You're, you're kind of keeping up on cards in some respects. Yeah, this is a very, very good fight back here from Autumn. I am enjoying this very much. And also you get to blink a bunch of stuff out. So you get to blink out these Omen of the Seas, the Omen of the Sun, and the Maze Mind Stone. Now, I don't think Autumn... I don't think Autumn... Like, Autumn has the opportunity to activate the Maze Mind Tome. I think but, she would have need full control there. Yeah, okay, but response. just just keeping it, so it's fine. Yeah. And also, I, I don't think that Autumn wants to scry the top card to the bottom. I think wants to keep the Doom Scar, so the activation yeah. of the scry is irrelevant. So we'll just ignore that comment and just keep moseying along here. <laughs> All right, so still shields down here for Autumn, but plenty got done that turn. Now it's on to Paolo to determine how he wants to take care of this very quickly growing battlefield. So things getting interesting now because. Paulo's hand is still good. Yeah. And the thing I'm thinking, you know, I, I think I, I think we're going to see Extinction Event for evens, probably, and just say, you know what, let's clean up all this garbage, and you're left with the Sky Noodle, which I have an answer for. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the thing I'm thinking right now is, what is the next ultimatum going to find? Because there's still a Warren Clex in the deck, there's still another Epiphany in the deck, um, but the Kiora that best the Sea God is gone. Yeah. Um, the Tibalt is gone. Yeah. So I guess the world champion gets to answer this question for us, eh? All right, let's see what you're going for there, Paolo. There's another Seagate restoration. There's Elder Gogoroth. It's a pretty big, chunky boy to put in the way. Okay. All right, Muscles. so... There you go. Extra turns, extra cards, extra muscle. If you give Vorinclex Epiphany, you take six, you go to 12, then you take six, seven, eight. That's so 12 four. minutes, so you go to four. Um, or you could just let Paulo just have all, all the cards in the world. <laughs> well, he's tapped out now, so what's he going to do with them? Yeah. Also, how many good... I mean, I think there's also an interesting question of what other great cards does Paulo have left to draw? I mean, there are some that are left in there, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But... All right, he's going to draw a big, okay. big amount of cards, as okay. well as uh, get a 6-6 six, six on the board. <laughs> oh, goodness, look at those draws. Woo! Okay, I think that Doomscar is a good uh, a good choice at this point. <laughs> yeah, so what's kind of, I guess what's kind of fascinating here is that Autumn, Autumn's deck is pretty good against creatures, mm. right? So, cre and that's part of the reason that she brought that to the tournament, is I imagine the the Gruel Adventures matchup, the Nye Adventures, Nye Token stacks, Mono Red, Mono White, like, great against those. Yeah. So, you know, how well do we handle big creatures like Vorin Klex and Elder Gargaroth and Pelucranos? Well, we're going to find out. Um, it doesn't feel like full panic mode here yet. No. Autumn's keeping her cool. Here comes the other trigger of Yorion. Going to take a 
Bunch of looks on top of the library. Gonna get rid of that binding the old gods. Well, and if, if Autumn's able to find something like a... Well, we know the Doomscar is there, and she's yeah. gonna keep that, but like, it, an ECD would go a long way here, I think. Yep. Another Omen off the top. Padding the life total a little bit, getting a few extra dudes down on the battlefield, both of Melitus off the top of the library there. And we still have a game here, my friends. We've seen two emergent ultimatums, and you'd think that would be enough, but no, no, no. Do not count out Autumn Burchette. Oh, okay, there we go. There we go. I think you want one of those. Okay. Woohoo! Nice. That is a very, very good draw indeed for Autumn. Elspeth Conquer's death will take care of this big old boy on the battlefield. Now, when do we start leaving up mana for Sword Coming? That's 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 a thing I've been thinking about a little bit. It's just how relevant is that card right now, as opposed to other options? Because Autumn Autumn does have quite a few. Okay, so now Nico, Nico, huh? We haven't seen this one in Strixhaven Standard like at all. Mm -mm. Oh, I guess I I guess right now. Oh, how many cards did we draw there? Oh, six damage! Neat! Okay, that's six. So we took care of the Vorin Clex, and now the future ECDs are going to be really good. And oh. we're attacking. Are we actually going to win? Not After a two, turn are we around. winning this game? Oh my goodness. It, it's certainly looking like it. So Paolo, on the back foot now, has to deal with this board. What? You know, the Unbelievable. ECD the ECD is going to be great for the follow-up threats here, the Gargaros and the Pelucranos and everything else. You know, that's why that's why I thought the ECD would be a pretty nice find. The Nico was awesome at taking care of the Vorinclex. And okay. I, I, think, I think Autumn might be in the driver's seat, which I did not think I was going to say five minutes ago. No, 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 no. She's just clawed her way back here, just using the tools available, finding the relevant cards off the top of the library, not worrying too much about the emergence ultimatums because apparently she's just got an answer for anything that Paolo finds. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Goodness gracious me, oh my. Okay, what do we follow up here with? There is a second Elder Gargaroth, there is Polokranos as well. Uh, is Paolo thinking he needs to leave up a mystical dispute? That's the question. Wow, okay. So a little cultivating. Land does enter the battlefield uh, untapped. So feels like a little bit of a discount on the cultivator. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Another big bird. All right. Uh, can we just clear the way here with ECD and Skyclave Apparition? There is a counterspell up in Paolo's hand. It's just hiding on the side of the out of the screen there. Yeah, and, and, and Paolo does have the ability to still play a Heartless Act and stuff. So there's, mm -hmm. there's still some game left to be played here, I think. But ECD sure does look nice. Oh, yes, indeed. So goodbye, Gargaroth. No blocking, no life gain, no card draw, no creatures for you. And uh, just chipping away in the air for four. Heartless Act is going to be cost and response here. Let's get rid of Sky Noodle. Okay, just cleanly let that go. Oop. Hmm. Comes under okay. the sea. So this is one of those turns where it looks like Autumn is just going to keep up Saw It Coming. She's had that for a little while. Mm -hmm. Was curious how that was going to work itself into the equation. So I think we finally have an answer to that question. Something to potentially do here. <laughs> this smells like a board wipe. <laughs> yeah, it's so suspicious when, uh, when <laughs> the one creature attacks into, into three of them. But just happy to chump block there as Autumn. So they get a healthy-ish 14. Pretty Allo's quick down to eight. Too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wild game. This has been a crazy game, but still two Alder Gargaroth in hand. Ooh, was that a Palaka Predation off the it top? It is. Hello. That's, that's, that's problematic. That's a good place to go, yeah. Get some info. Yeah. All right, take a look. No play in response. What do you fear most, Mr. World Champion? Hmm, okay, so card with mana value three or greater. So Doomscar, Apparition, Big Bird, Omen, <laughs> Saw It Coming. Pretty good options. Yeah, this is a tricky pick. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Don't forget, though, we have an ECD on the board, so whatever does get discarded can come back later. That's a very, very, very good point. So just going to take the counter spell. It'll clear the way for the 
the uh, blockers or potential blockers in hand here. Having this reset button of Doomscar is also pretty attractive too, I think. Mm -hmm. Wow, this 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 one's turned into quite the slog, complicated on both sides. Yeah, and you know you want to know something, Cedric? What's that? We're in game one. Yeah, we and are. We got... Twelve minutes left. Ooh, on the clock. that is a good thing to point out, Ailey. Mm. That is a really important thing to point out. So yes, this game marathon e as it has been. <laughs> We're gonna need to find a winner quick, quick. Yep. All right, non-creature spells are more expensive. What is the leadoff here from Autumn Chet? Looking at the big old Sky Noodle. Is he gonna come down and reset a bunch of stuff? Elspeth conquers death away that blocker and just starts slamming in damage. Let's see if that's the way to go. It's first going to be a Skyclave Apparition that can also get rid of Polycranos. Yep. Oh, in response, we're gonna punch a few things. Yeah, is there any fighting to be done here? Looks like oh, yeah. yes. Polycranos okay. is feeling feisty. Nets himself a 4-4. Okay. Which I don't think we have a way to deal with as a blocker. Yeah, a little chump block city, but as far as attacking through it, yeah. nothing, nothing, nothing too clean, it looks like. I think to get rid of that at the moment. Yeah, does Aut I'm curious if Autumn actually wants to cast this. Is there is there a concern about Mystical Dispute? Can we pay Mystical Dispute? It looks like we no. can't. Ooh, is this actually... Uh... Uh-oh. Well, those are... Uh, let me check something really quick. Mystical Dispute on the stack. Unfortunately, yep. no third mana to pay for Brutal. it. Rogan Triumph's gonna get scryed to the bottom with Temple of Enlightenment. And now there are two big old blockers in the way here for Palo. Huh. But the on the plus side, Elspeth Conquer's Death is gonna go off next turn. Yeah, Sky can't Nomad think we're will yeah. return. Okay. It is I'm glad you keep highlighting that because that's a that's a wrinkle in this game that really matters. All right, happy to chump. No okay. damage for you. Does Paulo actually want to commit anything else to the battlefield? Because you know you have an opponent with Doomscar mm. in hand, so what does committing more to the battlefield even do for you? It doesn't feel like it does a ton. Just going to cycle away that Triumph, finds a Dark War pathway. <laughs> Wolf Willowhaven, going to be activated, and that's the most expensive wolf in Magic, I'm sure. <laughs> two two for five mana. So he's just gonna sandbag those Elder Gargaroth for the time being, it looks like. Or he will okay. be able to cast it here if he wants to. Yeah, I don't I don't think he wants to though. Mm -mm. The 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 fear I have right now for Paulo Ooh. is that I think he's running out of threats. Yeah. It because feels he's already like that. he's already resolved two ultimatums. You know, his is Vorinclex, Kiora, Tabalt, Big Bird, all gone. Um, Gargaros, I don't want to say that's all that he has left to win the game with, but it's probably the best creature he has to win the game with, and he already knows that Autumn has a Doomscar in hand. So the ability to win this game seems actually really, really hard. And now with Ark on a Sun's Grace and casting enchantments, and all these enchantments are going to come back from from Urian. Yeah. I think the Heartless Act has to be fired off sooner rather than later because yeah. otherwise Paolo's going to have an army to deal with. Yeah. He does have the extinction event, so he can deal with the the tokens because they're all even. And, and that would also take care of the Archon. It would mm. also take care of his tokens and his Quandrix Cultivator. Yeah. Which he may be okay with that. Oh, man. This game is intense. So here we're going to see Heartless Act. That'll take care of the Archon of Sun's Grace. Joy Disruption won't be able to counter that, unfortunately. <laughs> you like triggers, Cedric? Big on them. Huge I like fan. Triggers. I'm a huge fan of triggers. Skyclave Apparition will take care of the Quandrix Cultivator. Ugh. Go away, lands. We don't want you. Nope. Let's draw some gas, please. I know there's a gas shortage, or at least there was, but we don't want any of that here. Thank you very much. Don't mind that counter spell. Nice. Uh, glass casket can get rid of the blockers in the way, but not what Autumn wants right now. All right, what's on the top of the library, Palo? 
There's a mystical dispute, so he's gonna keep that. Now we're gonna start running out the big boys. Here mm. comes Elder Gargaroth. So what coming's gonna get snapped off here. Mystical dispute can't do anything against three open mana. But there is a second one. Yeah, so do we play okay, so we we clean it up. Yeah, okay. Odd, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'll yeah. keep the the count. Uh, sorry, the uh, creatures alive. Yep. On Palo's side, get him another four four. Okay, Palo, Palo trying to make a little <laughs> bit of a comeback. Here. Okay. So now, so now we go beat downs. Um, gonna activate Tome before get some info. You, you're drawing Archon of Sun's Grace, so it's probably chump 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 Doom Scar. Yeah. Reset. Yeah. Archon. You have more. You have more cards than your opponent. You have a Tome. You just have a better battlefield than your opponent. I guess you don't have to Doom Scar right away if you don't want to, because you also just still have some stuff out oh, here. Oh no, it's at first. Uh, yeah, it looks like maybe some damage could have gotten through, oh. but but I guess well, it looks like maybe some points of damage got, could have gotten through, but you know, clock and trying to yeah, keep yeah, moving. Yeah. So I can I can fair, understand fair. it. I can understand it. It's hustle time. We we yeah. gotta we gotta kick it up a notch here. Oh boy, this is so stressful. Okay, I'm so now, for them. <laughs> yeah, so am I. So, so now what I'm thinking is like, okay, what's our plan against these two other creatures? Well, we didn't know Pelucranos was going to be the draw step, but like, what's the plan against the follow up Gargaroth? This is Cry. That seems like a valid option. Say it again. Cry. Okay, I, well, that's not my fa <laughs> it's not my favorite, but all right. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Look, that's not my favorite thing. Gonna, like, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> oh goodness me. So in response to the Polygranos on the stack, here comes a pony, courtesy of the Archon of Sun's Grace. Going to get a couple creatures down too. And Polygranos, you're going to think he's feeling feisty and wants to get rid of that Archon of Sun's Grace. But uh, let's see what else Paolo does with his turn. Yeah, I mean, we could see some, we could see some fighting. Okay, so punch that down. Mm -hmm. All right. Autumn Sand's not particularly good now. Yeah, okay, oh, so this, so... So yeah, this is this is well. Oh! Okay, so that takes care of that. that I was gonna say uh, that this is my concern, but we found we found a way to deal with this. <laughs> oh, we have a game. Uh, yet, we found a, we found a way to deal with Polychronos too. Oh, because he's I a pain in the butt. He keeps coming back, so you want to exile him. Yeah, you really want to exile that card. Yeah, Paul, we got a little reaction out of him. That doesn't happen much. Mm -mm. Do you want to fight something on your way out here, friend? Unfortunately, not enough mana to fight twice and avoid this exile, so okay. that's gonna go under the Skyclave Apparition, and we're gonna follow up here with a big ol' kaboom. All right, so we clean this up. You give Paulo a 4-4. You play another Tome. You got a lot of life to work with. And again, I think the whole point of all of this, which I, I still can't believe this has actually happened, <laughs> is that you've kind of run Paulo out of yeah. threats. It's like you have a 4-4 now. You're welcome. Like, what is, <laughs> what is his best draw? Because, like, I'm even thinking, like, even if you draw a Merchant Ultimatum, your piles aren't even good now. No, they're not. Oh man, Autumn is drawing, unfortunately, not the best cards. Well, I mean, you're gonna, get, you get a couple of draw steps here. You oh. also can control your draw pretty well with um, with the scrying if you want to, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can you can sacrifice these shards and draw a card. Like, you're gonna get a lot of looks at it. Ugh. And so we do have the glass casket to deal with the biggest of the two tokens. That Maze Mind Tome is going to get exiled. Build a ruin, not what we want to see. So if if I'm Autumn right now, I'm thinking to myself, I'm a huge favorite to win this game, overdog, if you will. Um, <laughs> I gotta have it over by 7:30. Yeah. It's at nine right now and ticking down. It's got to be over by 7:30 because the <laughs> clock the clock is a real thing now. We we can't not talk about it. Yeah. Nine minutes left. In for two goes Paolo with the little wolf that could. We're gonna scry here with a shard from Nico Aris. There, there you is Yorion. <laughs> Oh, goody. Oh, these Dwari Disruptions, man. They just love being in Autumn's hand right now. They're so useless at this point in the game. Mystical Dispute's not doing anything either. And we are going to bounce absolutely every freaking thing, including the Glass Casket. I know you like triggers. I like triggers. We all love to see it. So here comes a bunch of stuff on the board for Autumn Burchette. And Palo is in deep trouble now. Yeah. That was the perfect draw there for Autumn. Glass Casket takes care of the blocker. You get a lot of triggers here with the omens. A lot of time goes by with these triggers, of course. So Autumn's got to keep kind of getting it moving yeah. here. But Paulo doesn't really have a very good draw, and Autumn should be able to attack for a lethal next turn. So if you're rooting for Autumn Burchette, that counter spells real nice too, by the way. That should lock it. Oh, yeah. But if you're rooting for Autumn, 
Got it oh. done. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little late to that there party. It's a little late. <laughs> but um, you gotta go for it, right? You actually got, you absolutely gotta cast it. And Autumn saw it coming, so see you later. And should be able go. to play for dispute. Oh my goodness me! What an absolute comeback there from Autumn Burchett is going to be able to wrap up this game here. Paolo can do absolutely nothing. A the sick big game. bad being beaten in game number one here, but Autumn needs to hustle that for game sick number game two. Sick game magic right there. That oh is my a sick game. goodness. I'm like, I've actually got chills from that game. That was, <laughs> that was so crazy. Well, now, now it gets tough because now things get really interesting. So Autumn won a game I don't, I didn't think she was going to be able to win because I do think mm. that game one is not a very good matchup, right? We saw the back and forth at the early stages of the game with the saw coming, right? I need to keep yep. it for ultimatum. I don't want to have to counter this cure the best of sea god, but I'm going to counter it, which means I'm going to tap out for ECD and then get ultimatum and then go on to come all the way back and win, right? Yep. Multiple Seagate restorations resolve, all this other stuff. But now... Autumn has two opponents, not one. Mm -hmm. Paulo, which that's more than enough of an opponent. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is arguably the best player of all time, best active player, whatever you want to give him. And now also the clock is an opponent. So it, it's, it's, it's two on one now. And, and Autumn's got to try to defeat both. Now, is she capable? I absolutely think so. And mm -hmm. she got out of that one, I think, Ailey, with, um, with like 815 left. Yeah, roughly eight minutes. So yeah. I was going to ask you, is the plan now to just try and get as many threats down and beat the living daylights out of Paolo? Because time is not on her side. No, it's not. And, and you have to change and contort the way that you play now because time is a factor. Uh, that first game, I and mean, when we all watched it, awesome game, took a while to win. So time is definitely a thing now here for Autumn. And if, if this game... If this game gets away, you might have to concede the second game kind of early. So who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Well, if any if anyone can determine if they're favored in the matchup or not, it's these two players. So yeah. if you see a snap concede after a couple of spells resolve, don't be surprised. We just need to get this game over and done with as soon as possible. Okay. That's a pretty good hand. Right. It's go time. Let's have a look here. Yeah, really nice hand from both sides. An extra land for Palo would be... Nice. There is Palaka Predation, though, that can act as a land, though. This, uh, is not the, this is not the best hand I've ever seen for Paulo. It's not a bad hand, but it's not like your favorite. You don't really have much mana acceleration, a little bit more removal than you'd like, so I don't mind the mulligan here. Now he's got actually something to... He's actually got something nice to work towards here. He can, yeah, he can put the Heartless Act away. He's got mana acceleration with Cultivate that also fixes his mana, a Dispute to counter, a Discard spell, and, and, and then Coma to play towards. So it's a really good mulligan. And then Autumn's hand has some nice permission in it because we know how good counter spells are against um, this strategy. So both players have found a pretty good, uh, pretty good opening hands. All right, well, we're off to the races here. Temple of Enlightenment and Katria Triumph down on the battlefield. 12 minutes left on Palo's clock, so it does have the time advantage there. But let's see what these players come up with. Maze Mind Tome is going to be the first thing down on the battlefield. We'll be able to start scrying and drawing for Autumn as the turn passes back. And we're likely to see Cultivate going here. And not something that Autumn wants to see resolved, too, because the mana advantage is, is definitely relevant against the deck with counter spells, because this allows you to double spell now when you have more mana than your opponent. So the sort of play that we can see here, of course, is play a four or five mana spell. Autumn tries to counter with a negate or a saw coming. You mystical dispute it because you have a mana advantage, and then it kind of takes over the game a little bit for Paulo. Um, but also, Paulo, as I mentioned, has Coma to play towards, uh, which is an incredibly powerful card out of the sideboard for matchups just like this. Yeah, and Coma is very, very difficult to answer once it hits the battlefield. You need to have an instant speed removal, otherwise it can just protect itself. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if we get to Coma, the Cosmos Serpent, a little later, but, you know, first things first, let's get our lands down. Let's try and resolve our threats. Will we see Archon of Sun's Grace hit the battlefield here, or are we just going to pass the turn and hold up? I saw it coming. Looks like we're just going to leave Saw it coming up. You saw the search there for a blue land as opposed to a white one. does have a white land in hand, um, to be able to play Archon on the following turn. So mana is not really much of a concern at all here uh, for Burchett. And if Saw coming doesn't get cast, then you can just very simply activate Maze Mind Stone, draw a card, and mosey on along. You see the clock there at 716. Again, it's going to be a factor in the game. We're going to continue to just focus on the game in front of us because well, naturally Burchett's going to play as quickly as possible. Now, Ailey, if we get down to that two or one minute mark, <laughs> turn on the Super Mario 3 music. <laughs> or do 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 depending on which level you're on i guess that's, that's correct <laughs> oh please no dmca right onwards we go <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Uh, Maze Mind Tome, finding a couple cards there for Autumn, passes the turn back, is just sitting and waiting for Paolo to pull the trigger on something here. Quandrix Cultivator gets in for three points of damage. Will we see a follow-up here of the dress? Taking a look in the hand I mean, this of turns, Autumn and revealing all the secrets. This turn's great. I mean, you, you get to go dress Coma. This is why the mana advantage aspect of things really matter. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, because he can just sacrifice Hazel Passage has the necessary greens and blues to be able to do this. Now, Paulo may not be in as big a rush as uh, I am or we are in so far <laughs> as he might just say, dispute this. I really want to see what the heck is going on over there. Yeah, test of talents. We'll be able to take care of all the copies of Duress. It's usually not the target you want, but uh, Mystical Dispute is going to take care of that test of talents. Will this force the negate from Autumn? Doesn't look like it, so we will get to take a look here in the hand. What is he going to take? I like this I like this counter from Paulo a lot, uh, and the reason I like it is because information, especially for a player of his caliber, is so key. Because now not only does he get to take a card, uh, Shark Typhoon or Negate, whichever one he wants to take, whatever, but now he also knows, okay, Autumn has Archon, has Urian, has a couple of lands, so these are the things I have to concern myself with. And I think for... And I can't say this with absolute certainty, but because there's a card over there and saw it coming, right? It can either be saw it coming or it can be Doomscar. Yep. So that might also be a big part of the reason that you, you saw Apollo not even try to windmill slam down the coma, because if it's Doomscar, it's just like, okay, why did I even rush this out so much? My creature's dead. I have nothing to play towards. Right? Well, so don't forget that coma does create a serpent and can make itself in indestructible. So Doomscar is not point. that scary. There's Binding. It's gonna go after the Maze Mind Tome, that's the only valid target on the battlefield, so we will get a card here off the top of the library. The Birth of Melitus. Oh man, that big old Cosmo Serpent is scary. I mean, it's, <sighs> it's, it's what Paulo is gonna wanna play towards, but you've also got kind of the... Uh, look, his, his Sky Nomads are not gonna be as good as Autumn's are, but I mean, there's a little value along the way, right? You can blink the Quandrix Cultivator. You can blink the you can blink the Binding, and I mean, get a little something cooking there. Yeah, I was, I was going to mention that, like the the Yorion certainly seems like it plays more of a leading role in Autumn's deck than it does in Palos. It's been a lot more impactful, especially in that first game that we saw, as the Quandrix Cultivator is going to ch chimp in here for three more points of damage. And here comes Coma. All right, it's go time. <laughs> Hi, big snake. This is fine. I mean, can't counter it, can't doom scar it, can't do much of anything to it. Mm -mm. So now you got to try to play through it. And now you have to deal with three threes that just keep coming every single turn. And so I mentioned, I mentioned during the sideboarding of the sideboarding between game one and game two. If Autumn doesn't feel like she can win this game, she might dip on this game real fast. Yeah. Right, because because Coma, I mean, and for what it's worth, Coma does clean it up pretty quick if it goes unanswered. <laughs> so she might not have to dip on the game all that fast. Um, but, you know, it's possible if she just goes, I'm out of here. Like, yeah. I, I just can't beat this thing. So I'll have five and a half minutes to win game three. Yeah. It's entirely possible. But on the plus side, there are two enchantments and a Yorion to blink and create a massive army in the air. I could get the game one here for her. Yeah, so it, th this weird thing kind of happens where you're, you're, in a way, you're almost kind of incentivized to keep playing. Yeah. So again, now you're kind of juggling a couple balls in the air because it, you're you're not playing against just one person, you're playing against two. One of them happens to be the reigning world champion. <laughs> so, no you know, rock, rock in a hard place, as it were. <laughs> oh, goodness me. So Paolo, with nothing left to do, just a Bark Channel Pathway in hand, looks to Yorion Sky Nomad. And, jeez, that's, that's the quickest sword coming I ever yeah, seen. Get that, get that out of here. <laughs> GTFO is basically what Autumn said to Yorion, so yeah. no extra land there for you. Dwarves disruption off the top of the library. Here comes Birth of Melitus. I mean, I'm kind of with you. I, uh, well, I, like, I'm with you in so far as I can rationalize continuing to play. Yeah. I really can. Because you have multiple cop it. you have multiple copies. I mean, just, just look at this next turn, right? Yorion comes down, bounces the two enchantments, we get two more ponies. The second Yorion can come down the turn after that, yeah. bounce everything, you get even more ponies, you get double the ponies. 
you, your creatures, you know, you're you're gaining life. You're kind of racing. Yeah. I mean, at, at the at the same time, Coma is making a ton of three threes. Um, you know, because it's every upkeep, not just your upkeep. Yeah. Um, I mean, <laughs> the life gain could be enough to just, you know, block the biggest things and take a couple three points of damage from the snicks. Yeah, so this is this is we are right on the border because of Archon's involvement in this game. That like you're teetering on the I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to keep playing because weirdly enough, I think it, and this is this is me speaking like Autumn's inner monologue. Mm. I think that I can maybe outrace this Archon. Don't forget, Or though, excuse me, this Coma. Don't forget, Coma can tap things, too. Yeah. Yeah, but so... With, oh, boy. But with the... T Ooh, that's... Oh, Paulo. That's you cheeky. Paulo, you dirty dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paulo. Uh, oh, that's rude. That's That's got to be in the attack... That's got to be in the attack set before attackers, I think. Yeah. Is that when we did that? I think so. Are we going to tap more things? Because that that makes it so that Yuri oh. that makes it so that Yuri and can't uh, can't be played. Is yep. that what we're doing here? It looks like it. Oh no. Okay, I think I think in a battle between a big old snake and a pretty pony, I think the snake might win, might just win. Oh oh, PV, you are filthy. That was nice. If he can find a removal spell and tap down one of these blockers, it's got lethal. That was not, uh, well, backup, backup <laughs> Coma, not the best, not the best. Mm -hmm. Only want one of you, friends. But right. you can still, you can still be down, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's not really great blocks. I'm gonna take six here. Okay. Down to seven, Autumn goes. Oh, this is not looking super good here for our mythic champion number one. Disdainful Stroke, it's not gonna do much at this point. Oh, is it Sky Noodle time? Yeah, I mean this this time I don't think it can be stopped. Yeah. I really like I really like what PB did last turn to stop it. And I guess, okay, so now you shut this down. Okay, this one comes in. A little lifelink action. I think there was a window for Paolo to sneak the damage through by tapping down all the blockers, but now he's gonna have way too many to deal with to get the points of damage through. Let's see, what are we, okay, so you're gonna blink out, like, your two enchantments. Hmm. This game's getting good. Oh, yeah. And, and it's still, it's still on the, you, you still gotta keep playing. Yeah. And you got, I mean, you got enough flyers here in lifelink, and, yeah. and just gaining life, it's, it's worth it. Like, might actually be able to legitimately race Coma. Yep, I think that's exactly what Autumn's plan is here. It's like, oh, you got a bunch of nice snacks there, but you can't get through for damage. So what you gonna do? Omen of the Sea off the top. Can we find some way to interact with this board for Paolo? All right, so Paolo can cast Omen. I think he has the necessary mana to be able to cast Omen into Ultimatum, but but we have ne we have Negate and Stroke mana available. Yeah. So I guess this is, this is weird, but like you could tap the lands with the coma and then play the ultimatum post combat. <laughs> yeah. But Paulo bricked, so that doesn't matter. No, that's uh, yeah. He kind of he kind of whiffed there. So coma's kind of just swinging into a wall of dudes and this little one one is just saying, "Bring it on, you big snack." And well, these it, flyers, they're they're going to do it. I'm, I'm calling think, it now. These flyers are going to get it done. I think so. Yeah, I so as good as coma is, coma doesn't trample, so chump blocking's easy. And I I think I'm with you. I actually think that these flyers, I think, are going to be enough. <laughs> this game has been wild. My goodness me. All right. So four minutes left on the clock. Easy, breezy, mac and cheesy. What else can we do this turn? Well, we do have that second copy of Yorion. We can go and get the third one in the companion zone. Oh, goodness. All right. So Koma doing the best that it can to tap down the flying threats. But there are many of them, so I think we're going to see a bunch of snakes sacrificed here just to tap down this army. Yeah, I wonder because you got to you got to like walk that you got to walk that line mm. of how many do you want to tap down while still being able to present um, a relevant amount of attackers. But now, I mean, you're, you got six coming across, yeah, that's gaining six, six life, life. So, too. so yeah, so Paulo, Paulo's got to pivot to like something else. But the the problem with that, well, there's multiple. One, another big bird on the way. It appears. <laughs> two, there's two hard counters in hand for Autumn. Yeah. He knows about the negates, so he'll be playing around that. So ideally, he needs to present two threats, 
bait the counter and then hope that there's not a follow-up in Autumn's hand. Yeah, I just don't know how he's going to be able to do that. Oh, my. All right, let's bounce some stuff. Let's get some dudes. Oh, and it's also, yeah, it's Blink City here because you get to also blink out the... The, yeah, you get to blink out your existing one. That comes back. That triggers. <laughs> so yeah, we're just gonna we're just having a blast. Oh man, what an absolute masterclass here from Autumn and Chad, bringing a deck that nobody else thought to even consider <laughs> in this tournament, and just showing exactly how powerful it can be. Uh, we'll do it again, cause why not? It's sick. Look at my horse. My horse is amazing. <laughs> All right, do or die time, yeah. Paolo. Can you find something to keep you alive here? Nope. No, that's not going to do it. Dark Boy Pathway off the top of the library, an army of tokens on the other side, along with Yorian Sky Nomad. We're going to get the Archon back too. Autumn's doing a bit of a jig. You can see she's feeling super good about this. I am... <laughs> I'm gobsmacked. I'm blown away. <laughs> I'm legitimately blown away right now. Wow. Incredible stuff here. There's, there's nothing he can do. He's just... I mean, if you're if you're if you're Paula right now. You can't say you didn't get to play. No, you got to do everything you wanted to do, right? Like game one, you resolved two ultimatums. You drew who knows how many cards you saw three fourths of your deck in game two. You drew your ace in coma. It's probably your best card after sideboard or at least one of your best cards after sideboard. You'd think. But apparently it doesn't do super well against a bunch of little knuckleheads, as you like to call them, Cedric. As I wow. think we have lethal here, unless uh, we're tapping down a bunch of... No, that's going to be GG from the world champion. And oh. Autumn Burchette is elated. What an absolutely fantastic performance. Goodness. <laughs> you celebrate that one. You deserved it. So Goodness. I, I don't know, and I, I'd love to find out, and hopefully Riley or someone else at the desk will have the opportunity to find out. I don't know if Autumn considers this to be a good matchup 